Welcome to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you tuned in. These lessons are for the last, last days. We are learning things from Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation. And the Bible verse that we want you to know because this is the only hope of the world today is the gospel of God's redeeming grace. I want every person that is listening to write this Bible verse down. This is going to be our theme. And it is in John chapter 3, verse 27. A man can receive nothing except it be given to him from heaven. This is a divine heavenly message. This is a divine heavenly calling. And this is the day that we are to be obeying the Lord in every word. We have already had the importance of getting back to the word of God. This is the only way we are going to be able to stand faithful to our heavenly Father that gave us his son, Jesus Christ. This book is from beginning to ending, is all about Christ. We see, now you need to know these Bible verses, you must write them down. Now remember, that Bible verse that I just gave you was John 3, 27. This Bible verse is Exodus 20, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. We must get back to the word of God. And this is for every person in the world. That's why this is the only hope of the world is the gospel of God's redeeming grace. The Bible is the word of God. We must read it because when we read this book, here's what happened. God gave us this book to study, to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to meditate on his word, and to live his word. And the one thing that you must always understand, that this is every person that's listening, every person in the world, this message, this is God's divine love letter to the whole world. Because God is love, and he loves us all the same. We must learn this from these lessons because this is what is needed today. And the most important thing that I want you to learn from this is the preached word. The preached word. God's divine principles for daily living are his divine principles. In 2 Timothy 4 verse 2, he says, preach the word. We are, when we give out his word, we are giving out this wonderful Bible verse that you must write down and memorize it. Psalm 12, 6. The words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. It's the only living book in the world. And then we must see in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 4. This is why we must know the word, because Satan is trying to defeat the very elect today. Now, remember, this is only for believers, because unbelievers cannot understand this truth because this truth has to be given 
by the Spirit of God. 1 Corinthians 2. This is so amazing when we study the Word and understand it. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 4. For I know nothing by myself. This is why we are to get into this book. And he says, now this was Paul writing this, my speech was, my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power of God. In demonstration of the Spirit and power of God. Now, if you can understand this, you will know that you can never have the knowledge that is in this book unless you have been born again by the Spirit of God. So this is in Revelation 21, 5, for he said, write, for these words are true and faithful. There's no controversy when you give out the Word of God. It speaks for itself. You associate scripture with scripture, and this is how you learn God's word. And Revelation 22, 6, these sayings are faithful and true. Now, when we understand what is going on, the Holy Spirit is the revealer and interpreter of each word. The Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 2, 13. Which things also we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. This has to be learned through the Spirit of God because he says in the book of John, this is what we need today, the book of John, we're going to learn a lot of lessons. And if you don't know the book of John, what we're going to do is to teach you what the book of John teaches. He teaches that Jesus is deity. He is the Son of God. And only the Son of God is to be worshipped. So here we have in John chapter 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, now this is, Jesus promises us a teacher of truth before he goes back to heaven. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. So we have to have the Spirit of God before we can understand this book. And then John 16, 13. Now you've got, you have to know these scriptures to understand. You have to be born again before you can understand and interpret these things. And the Spirit of God teaches you all things, so He interprets that for us. We worship Him in spirit and in truth. So Jesus, before He went back to the cross, before He went back to heaven, before the cross, He taught them in John 14, verse 13, How be it, when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will teach you all things. Now, I want you to read the seven things that he has given for us, for the Spirit of God to teach us. And then the last one is in verse 14. All things that the Father hath are mine. And then in verse 14, he shall glorify me. Do you know this is what we are to do? Whatsoever we do, do all to the glory of God. This is why he has this. And then, of course, you have the Trinity. Now, you cannot understand the book unless you know the Trinity. And I have given this to you so many times that you know it. There's no other way for you not to know it. But to those of you that have never heard these, he is a Trinity. 2,500 times in the Bible, he says, Elohim, that is, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And I have taught you how to sing this. God the Father, God the Father, God the Son, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, three and one, one and three. And then the reason you must know this, 
because you cannot go to heaven, which we're going to learn that the rapture is the next thing that's going to take place because you are not complete until you are born again by the Spirit of God. This is what we're learning in these lessons, and they are important. And then the foregoing facts reveal an important truth between the written Word of God, the Holy Scriptures, and Christ, the incarnate living Word of God. There is a vital organic union, co-equal, co-eternal. And we're going to learn about things that are eternal. Let me ask you a question before we go to those things that are eternal. This is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They work together in everything in this book. They cannot be separated. That's why the body of believers is so important. We are one in Christ. We are one with our Heavenly Father after we become a child of God. This is why we see in 1 Corinthians 2, 12, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us. All of these things are free. And when we learn about the rapture this week or next week, I'm going to teach you what the rapture is and who can be raptured. And all of you children that are listening, you have to continue to listen to these lessons because we're going to be taken up into heaven. God is above all the world, all of everything, and we're going to meet him in the clouds. This is, he is in, from outer space. That's what this lesson is. And we're going to be raptured to be with him. We're going to get a body of light. We're going to be taken up into heaven. When we reach the speed of light, we're going to have a body of light. All of you children that I've taught over all these years, I pray for a hundredfold of every person that's listened. And we will be raptured. And it doesn't cost us anything. And then he's preparing mansions for us. We have everything when we know Christ. We have the riches of his glory. The riches of everything in this world belongs to him. He's head over all. If Christ didn't exist, everything would cease to be. This is why we must know this book before it's eternally too late, and we are learning, and I'm repeating and repeating, so every person that's listening can understand and know these truths. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we come before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. We're rejoicing that we're looking for that blessed hope today and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we want every person that's listening to pray right now with me that the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus Christ, it takes the blood of Christ to give us new life, eternal life. And he will give us this moment, pouring out his spirit and his divine nature dwells in this body. And we are a temple of the living God. And we are to live holy as he's holy. And we pray right now for every person. Pour out thy spirit and thy blood upon every person. And this divine word, they can know they have the gift of eternal life when I give these promises out to them today. Save 100 fold. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So this is why we're teaching the Word of God, because it is the Word which by the gospel is preached unto you. That is the good news. The gospel means good news. So Paul says in Colossians, 1 Corinthians 2, 4, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words, now I gave this to you already, of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power. You see, once you're born again, 
the Spirit of God and the Word of God and the blood of Jesus Christ, He conquers all satanic powers around us. This is why we need the Word of God. So we're learning now today. I have a question for every person. And this is the greatest fear of people in the world is the fear of death. And you don't have to fear anything, but the thing that I'm going to teach you through these lessons so you can understand what God's Word is teaching us, this Bible verse, you must write these down. He says in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. This is talking about Jesus. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, the devil. He had the power of death. And Christ, when he died, Jesus Christ died. He's the son of God. He was always a son of God. And he became man so he could go to the cross and die because God can't die. And then after we receive that gift, we cannot die. So listen to this, every person that's listening. You do not have to fear death. Listen at verse 15. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. You see, we're, we're slaves to sin. We're in bondage until we receive Christ because we're dead in trespasses and sin. And it takes that blood to make us white as snow. So here we have John 17, 3. And this is life eternal, that we may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. So we see a twofold headship of Christ. He's the head of all things, and I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I, I have everything. So I can never be poor, and I can never be a slave when I receive Christ because he has made me free from death and from sin and I can live that obedient life and this is why my heart is pouring out to you more than it ever has been and I am praying in agony the way he prayed praying more earnestly laboring fervently in prayer that we will stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. This is His calling. This is our heavenly calling. So here we see Deuteronomy 33, 27. Now I'm going to give you lots of Bible verses so you can never doubt that you're born again. The eternal God is thy refuge. The eternal God. Only those things that are eternal are important. This is so wonderful. And then John 3, 16, 15, John 3, 15. We leave that one out, but you're get, getting that. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, never die, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. Everyone knows that Bible verse. For God so loved the world. And you can know this today by just quoting this scripture. For God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And you will not be a slave to sin. You will be free to obey God's word and love it. That's what we learn. And then John 5, 39. Search the scriptures for in them you have eternal life life. John 5, 24, Verily, verily, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. This is what you need today as a child of God. You will know these things after you know about him. What does he say? Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. 
He keeps giving and giving and giving. And he really doesn't ask anything in return. So here we see that this is what the Bible teaches. That's why we have to get back to the Word of God. Every person in the world are commanded to teach the Word to the children. That is the warning for all of us. And we've, we've already had that, but we'll have it again. And John 6, 68, Peter said to Jesus when he was on the earth, I call him Christ, and I get you confused, but he is Jesus. His, his earthly name is Jesus, but his heavenly name is Christ. He is our Lord He's our master. We are to follow him. This book is all about him. This is another thing you must learn because this is so important. From beginning to end, the Bible has one great theme. This is the person and work of Christ, Jesus Christ. And then Ephesians 1, 7. From beginning to end, the Bible testifies of one, one redemption. In Christ, we have redemption through his word, even the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of his glory. This is what we have in Christ. This is why we must get back to this book so we can know that the Bible teaches of one God. From Genesis to the book of Revelation bears witness to one God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Total revelation concerning him, Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ. He is the Son of God. He is the Son of Man. And the Bible, con continuous story. One continuous story all the way through the story of humanity in relation to God. So we're seeing now, and, and you can't ever doubt when you know this. So John 10, 28, I give unto them eternal life. And then Romans 5, 21, grace reigns through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. And everybody knows this Bible verse, Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So here we see, as we go to 1 John chapter 5, this is something you must thoroughly study every day. This is faith. It is, if you appropriate any of these truths by faith, you can claim every promise. Not one word will fail. That's why we must get back to the Bible. We must read it every day. It's just like food for our body. And when I told you this is God's love letter, let me ask you a question. When you go to the mailbox and get a letter written to you, how long does it take you to open it? That's exactly what this book is. His divine love letter to every person in the world. And you will never be a slave to sin after you accept Christ. The whole world needs this. That's why he came. And then I'm going to read these, and then I'm going to start it again next lesson. And I want you to listen. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. That's how you're born, by the Holy Spirit, by believing. It takes faith. And everyone that loveth him, that begat, loveth him also. Now, you've got to get this right. You have to read it and read it. Uh, loveth him also that is begotten of him. Every one of us are one body. Now, listen what he says in verse 2. If you don't have this, then you're not a child of God. Because this is, this is what he's teaching us. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments. Verse 3. 
This is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous because he's, we're just like a child. We have to be spanked with discipline and love. And he's chastening us, teaching us how great his love is. Every, he, he is right in all his ways and holy in all his works for a child of God. He never makes a mistake with us because we're his child. Verse 4, now listen at this. If you want victory, here you have. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. You see, you are not, uh, we have his divine nature. We've escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. This is, we do not live the way the world does. The world is enemy to us. They are, the world is our enemy. And this is why you children have to know this. I pray for every child in the world that God will conquer all satanic powers, all demonic spirits against thee. Every child in the world. This is what he wants. Verse 5, who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is what you need today. This is what the world needs. And this is why we're giving this out. And I, you can copy every one of these videos. Everything I, I have is for you. And you can learn that and teach another person. And if we each, every person that is a child of God, just reaches one person, that would be millions of people. I want everybody that is a child of God to get on their knees right now and pray this prayer. And I want you to continue it every day until we're raptured to be with the Lord. In Colossians 1, verse 9, he wants us to be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. He wants us to walk worthy of him unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of him, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering, with joyfulness giving thanks unto him. You bring me.